Hey guys, welcome to a new video of CSAT with Justin. So today we'll be talking about permutations and combinations. And when it comes to UPSC, this is one of the most important topic of UPSC. Okay. And last two years, UPSC has asked around four questions in each year from this topic. And we will be looking into, uh, uh, initially we'll be looking how we can solve the problems on permutations and combinations without using any formula, just by using logic. And the thing is that you don't need much formulas and everything in order to solve the questions of UPSC. Okay. Most of the questions can be tracked just by using logic. So initially we'll look into that and then we will go deeper into permutations and combination and we'll see how we can solve the problems using the formulas and everything okay so if you like this video please do subscribe share and support and if you want to join my telegram channel for daily questions and updates and uh, support you can join it using the link that i'll be providing in the description box as well so let's move on with the video okay so let us first look into the principle of addition and multiplication so let's assume you have two jobs a and b so a and b can be any job for example let's say a is felling a tree okay and let's assume that there are m different ways in doing the job a and n different ways in doing the job b okay this means that for example let's assume a is felling a tree you can fell a tree by using a saw you can fill a tree by using an axe. So there are different ways in which you can do a job A. That is M. And the number of ways in which you can do the job B is N. Now if you are asked a question like how many different ways are there to do A and B simultaneously. Okay. So how many different ways are there to do A and B simultaneously. Then the answer is M into N. Okay. Now you are asked how many number of ways are there in which you can do, you need to do A or B. So either you need to do the job A or you need to do the job B. Then this, is, this will be equal to M plus N. So here if the question is AND, you need to multiply the possibilities. So you, you, know, you can do A in M different ways and you can do B in N different ways. Since this is AND here, you need, you need to multiply M and N. Now when it comes to A or B, you have M different ways in which you can do the job A and you have N different ways in which you can do the job B. And since the word, in, in, since it's A or B, you need to add M and N. So this is the principle of addition and multiplication. Now I'll give you an example for you to understand this concept much more easily. So in order to understand the principle of addition and multiplication, let us look into an example now. So let's say I have six type of sweets and four type of chocolates with me. So let's say the type of sweets I have are S1, S2, S3, S4, S5 and S6. I have six different type of sweets with me. And when it comes to chocolate, let's say I have C1, C2, C3 and C4 with me. These are four different type of chocolates. Now I ask you to take a sweet and a chocolate. I ask you to take a sweet and a chocolate. So you need to take one sweet and one chocolate. So I told you that according to principle of multiplication, if and comes, the answer will be six into four, right? Because here there are six sweet. There are six different ways in which you can select the sweet. There are four different ways in which you can select the chocolate. So your answer should come six into four is equal to 24. So I will tell you how this is happening. Okay. So I asked you to take a sweet and chocolate. Let's assume that you took the sweet S1. Now you have four different ways in which you can select a chocolate. You can either select C1. You can either select C2. You can either select C3 and you can either select C4. That means there is S1, C1 is a possibility. S1, C2 is a possibility. S1, C3 is a possibility. And S1, C4 is a possibility. So there are four possibilities if you are selecting the sweet s1 now let's assume that you are selecting the sweet s2 again you can take c1 chocolate right you can take c2 chocolate or you can take c3 chocolate or you take, can take c4 chocolate that is you can take s2 c1 is a possibility s2 c2 is a possibility s2 c3 is a possibility and s2 c4 is a possibility so you have again four possibilities 
so in this way in s3 also if you are selecting the suite s3 you have four possibilities likewise you uh, when you select s4 you have uh, four possibility s5 you have four possibility s6 you have four possibility so total will come 6 into 4 24 so this is how 6 into 4 the principle of multiplication is coming now i asked you to select a sweet or a chocolate that means you can only select one of them you can either select sweet uh, sweet or you can select a chocolate that means you can either select s1 you can either select s2 you can either select s3 you can either select s4 s5 or you can either select a 6 or you can select c1 c2 or c3 or c4 that is total you have 10 different ways in which you can select a sweet or a chocolate so here the, uh, the word coming here is or I told you that according to principle of addition the number of possibilities will be 6 plus 4 which is equal to 10. So this is how you need to use the principle of addition and multiplication in, your, in order to solve the problem. Now I will give you different examples uh, and there I will explain to you how you can solve the problems on permutations and combination just by using the concept and just by uh, without using any formulas or anything. So I'll be giving you different examples. So we'll move on to that. So let us move into examples now and we'll explain the concepts. I'll explain the concept to you using different examples. So this is a this is the question given to you. Find the number of possibilities to arrange four people in a queue. So before moving on to the question, I'll tell you something else. So first, the, actually it is very important for you to understand or identify whether a question given to you is about permutation or about combination. So I'll explain this to you with the help of an example. Let's say you have four people A, B, C and D. Okay. Now I asked you to form a committee from these four people such that the committee consists of two people. So you need to select two people from here to form a committee. Okay. So either you can select AB, it's a committee. You can select BC, so B and C are formed um, in the committee. You need to select two people, right? So you can select AD. So you can you can do in different ways too. Uh, you can uh, select the people in different ways in order to form the committee. Here I select A first and then I select B. So the committee is consisting of A and B. Then in another way I select B first and then I select A first. Again the committee is consisting of A and B, right? So even if I select A first and B second or if I select B first and A second, the committee consists of the same people. It's the same committee. So here in this case, if you're forming a committee or if you're forming a team, the arrangement is not important. The only thing important is that whoever is in the committee, that's it. The arrangement is not important. Now I'll give you another example. Again, you have the same number of people A, B, C, D are there. Now I'm asking you to arrange this A, B and C, D or, or I am asking you to select two people from here and arrange them into a bench. There is a bench like this in which two people can sit. In this bench you can sit, um, two people can be sit in this bench. Okay. So from A, B and C, A, B, C and D I need to select two people and I need to arrange in this bench. So I select A and B. So I uh, uh, I, um, the A sat on the left side of the bench and B sat on the right side of the bench. So in second way, okay, in the second uh, way, B sat on the left side of the bench and A sat on the right side of the bench. So in these two cases, I am selecting the same persons A and B. But since it is arrangement in a bench here, the arrangement is important. So if I am uh, putting A on the left and B on the right, and if I am putting B on the left and A on the right, these are two different possibilities because here arrangement is important. So if arrangement is important, then that comes in permutations. Okay. So it is permutation. If arrangement is important, it is called permutation. So the question is about arranging in a queue. Okay. Or uh, arranging in a bench or uh, the questions about numbers because 12 is a number, right? If I am writing 21, it's another number. In both of the cases, the digits are same. 1 and 2, the digits are same. The arrangement is different, right? In the first case, 1 is one comes in first and then comes 2. In second case, 2 is coming first and 1 is coming later. But we are even though we are selecting the same digits, it's two different numbers. So the arrangement is important. So when the question is about number comes, 
it's it will be in permutation similarly the question is about alphabets okay uh, the word if the, the the question is about word there also arrangement is important so that all will be questions on per permutations but if the arrangement is not important for example if the question is about uh, selecting a committee or selecting a team so if you are asked about a question about selection it probably it will be coming in um, uh, in combinations so this you need to understand first now we will look into this question and firstly as i told you we are not using any formula i will tell you how you need to solve these kind of questions you just using your concept without using any formula so we will look into the first example here find the number of possibilities to arrange four people in a queue so here it is about arrangement it's arranging people in a queue so we know that the question is about permutation so if permutation come you can apply the trick that i am going to tell you so here there are four people let's say the people are a b c and d so i have four positions in the queue i need to arrange them in these four positions so in the first position i can either put a or put b or put c or d okay i can select any one of them and put in the first place so i ha i have four possibilities here in four ways i can select them okay now let's assume that i selected a and i put him into this first position now a is already gone so i have only three persons left from this three persons i can fill this position right so i have only three possibilities here let's assume that i put b here okay so b is also gone now you have c and d left from this c and d you need to either put someone in this position so you have two possibilities only here let's assume i put c here that is c is gone now only d is there so i need to put d here right so you have only one possibility so the total number of possibilities to arrange four people in a queue will be 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 so 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 means 4 into 3 is 12 12 into 2 is 24 right so the answer is there are 24 possibilities are there so this is how you need to solve the questions on permutation by just using the trick okay so i'll explain to you this again in different examples so let's move on with the next example so uh, let's look into the next example it says find the total number of two digit numbers actually if you are asked this question you don't need the concept of permutations and all to solve this problem we can solve it very easily but i in order for you to understand the concept on permutations i am saying to you this okay so uh, we have already studied in number system how to in the concept of digit how to uh, find the total number of two digit number you know that the first the 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 very first two digit number is 10 and the last two digit number is 99 right then 100 comes it's a three digit number so 99 is the last two digit number so if you want to find out how many numbers are there from 10 to 99 you just need to subtract 10 from 99 then add 1 so 99 minus 10 plus 1 will be 90 so this is how using the concept of digit in number system we have found out the number of two digit numbers so let's see how we can find out the number of two digit numbers using uh, the concept on permutation okay so it's a two digit number so you have two positions are there right and how many digits are there we have 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 right this much digits are there so there are total 10 digits so from th these 10 digits we need to arrange them here okay and you should first uh, uh, check whether this is a permutation question or a combination question and i already told you that the question on numbers will come will be a permutation because the arrangement is important so here arrangement is important so the question is on permutation so okay, we can use the trick okay so let us take this position so this is the first digit so first digit this is a two digit number if i put zero here the first digit will become zero then i put something here let's say we put one here this is zero one means it's one one is a single digit number right so zero cannot come in this position if zero comes it will become a one digit number but the question is about two digit numbers so we cannot put zero in this position so we cannot put zero but we can put all other numbers so all other numbers means i can put from one to nine so there are total nine possibilities are there now when it comes to second position second position you can put zero right if i put zero uh, it it is not going to affect the two digit number so i can put zero in this position i can only put i i cannot put zero in the first position 
but I can put 0 in the second position. So we have total 10 possibilities here. So we can write either 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 or till 9 any of the number we can write in this position. So the answer will come 9 into 10. So total 90 is there. Using the concept of digit also we got 90. Using the concept of permutation also we got 90. So this is how you need to solve the problem. Now I'll give you another example. So uh, let's take this example. Find the total number of two digit numbers such that each digit is distinct and non-zero. So uh, a similar kind of question has, be, has, asked, has been asked in the UPSC 2022. So here we need to find the total number of two digit numbers itself. But the question has said that each digit should be distinct and non-zero. So again we have uh, we have total 10 digits are there right 10 digits are there 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 so you have 10 digits now again it's a two digit number so you have two positions so in the first position we cannot write 0 if we write 0 it will become a one digit number also in the question says that the digit should be non zero so anyway we cannot write 0 so we have nine possibilities here now when it comes to this place again it shouldn't be zero because the question says it's non-zero we cannot use zero in the second position as well and also the question says that each digit is distinct what is distinct means distinct means each digit should be different for example if i put one here if i put select the digit one into the first position i cannot select one here why because if i select one then the digits becomes same the digit shouldn't be same that is what is meant by digit is distinct so if i put one here i cannot put one here that means i cannot put zero here right i cannot put zero here because zero is uh, it says it's non-zero again if i can i cannot put one here because one i already selected here so i have only eight possibilities here okay so nine into eight will be 72 so answer is 72. so let us move on with a different example Find the total number of three digit numbers such that at least two of its digits are the same. So here what uh, uh, it has said that you need to find the total number of three digit numbers such that two of its digits are the same. It means that either two of the digits are same or three digits can be same. Right. It means that you need to find out the numbers in which the digits are not distinct. Right. So you can do this in two ways. You can find first you can find out the number of distinct in three digit numbers then you can subtract it from the total three digit numbers okay or you can uh, find out the uh, numbers in which two digits are the same so we'll do in both ways so first let us find out the total number of uh, three digit numbers okay so total number of three digit numbers distinct and non-distinct non numbers together uh, so you have um, you have uh, 10 digits right from 0 to 9 you have 10 digits so here in this first place 0 cannot come right so 9 possibilities are there and in the second place 0 can come there are 10 possibilities in third place also 0 can come there are 10 possibilities so I am finding out the total number of three digit numbers including distinct and non-distinct non numbers okay so you will get 900 numbers are there in total now let us find out the number of three digit numbers which are in which the digits are distinct so let us uh, these are the three, po um, three three positions so in first position again zero won't come all other digits are possible so nine possibilities are there in the second place see zero can come but the first digit will not come because we are finding out the numbers in which dig digits are distinct so here nine possibilities they are there zero is a possibility but the number that we have written here won't, won't be a possibility and in the third case in the third place zero can be a possibility but the these two numbers which we have written in the first place and in the second place will not come because if it comes it becomes uh, a non-distinct numbers so eight possibilities are there so if you multiply nine nine and eight you will get 648 so we got that there are total 903 digit numbers including the numbers in which digits are distinct or non-distinct and we have 648 distinct three digit numbers so the total number of non-distinct three digit numbers will be 
900 minus 648 you will get 252 so now let us see how we can solve in a different way so here it has said that we need to find out the three total number of three digit numbers in which two of the at least two of the digits are same so let us take different cases here first okay let us say these are different cases so in the first case let's say here digit a digit a is there here also digit a is there then two digits are the same or right it has uh, said that at least two of its digits are the same so here these two digits are same now let's say this is a and the third digit is a so here also two digits are the same now let us assume that this is a and this is a so here also two digits are the same now the question said that at least two digits are the same right so it can uh, three digits can be same so let us take the final possibility in which all digits are a so in each case we'll uh, check in each case how many possibilities are there so let us take the first case so first case here we need to write a, a digit we have the digits from 0 to 9 so any of these digits we can write here so there are nine possibilities here right so whatever number we have written here we need to write here because it's both a right then only the digits will become same so whatever number we have written here we need to write here so therefore there is only one possibility to write this number okay so how many possibilities are here now so we cannot we can write zero here right we can write zero and um but we cannot write a here if we write a here then all digits will become same we have taken it as a separate case so we shouldn't consider writing a there so there are total nine possibilities again so 9 into 1 into 9 will become 9, 81 possibility. So in this case, like A, A and A blank, then there are 81 possibilities. So these are numbers like 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 4. All these numbers will come in this case, right? Because first two digits are the same. Here also first two digits are same. Here first two digits are same. So now let us take the second case. Here to write A, we have again nine possibilities. We cannot write zero. We can write any of the numbers. Again, if we write A here, we have to write A here, same digit there. So only one possibility will be here. Now here we cannot, we can write 0 and we cannot write A. So there are again total 9 possibilities. So 9 into 9 into 1 is 81 again. Now if we take the third case, here we cannot write 0, right? We cannot write 0 and we can write any of the numbers. So 9 possibilities are there. Okay. Here also. We can write 0, but we cannot write the number that we have written here. So there are 9 possibilities again here. And here, whatever number we have written here, we cannot, uh, we have to write it here, right? So there is only one possibility. So 9 into 9 into 1, again 81 possibilities are there. Now when it comes into the last case, here there are 9 ways to write here. We can write, uh, we cannot write 0, all other digits we can write here. And whatever digit we have written here, we need to write it here. So only one possibility is here. And also we need to write the same here. So one possibility again. So 9 into 9 into 1 is 9. So if you add all these things, you will again get 252. So in both ways, you are getting 252. So these are two methods in which you can solve this question. So I hope that you understand the concept of uh, uh, in the, the concepts in which you can um, solve the questions on permutation and combination without using any formula. So so now let us look into the equations or formulas on permutations and combination. Now as I already told you, the first thing that you need to understand or identify when you are getting a question is that whether the question is about permutation or it is about combination. So as I already mentioned, if arrangements are important in the question, then the question will be about per permutation. And if the arrangements are not important, it will be a question on combination. Now, if you have n dissimilar things, so you have total n things are there. Dissimilar means n things are all different. Okay. And from this n dissimilar things, you need to select r things at a time. Then if the question is on combination, the answer will be n c r, which is equal to n factorial divided by r factorial into n minus r factorial. Now, if you are not aware about what factorial is or if you have confusions on factorial i'll give you an example 5 factorial means you need to multiply the numbers from 1 to 5 that means 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 
3 into 4 into 5. If you are if you need to get 3 factorial, you need to multiply from 1 to 3, that is 1 into 2 into 3. So this is the concept of factorial. Now I will give you an example to understand this one. So let's just assume that you have 5 students and from these 5 students, you need to select 2 students in order to form a team. Okay. And you know that selecting a team or forming a team is actually the question on combination because arrangement is not important. For example, these 5 students are let's say A, B, C, D and E and you are selecting A and B first. That means you are selecting A first and then selecting B or you are selecting B first and then selecting A. It means that it means that both these cases are the same. Okay, the team is the same. So it's a question on combination because arrangement is not important. So here the answer will be from five students you need to select two students. Here the answer will be 5C2 that is equal to 5 factorial 5 factorial divided by 2 factorial into 5 minus 2 which is 3 factorial. So here 5 factorial means 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5 and in the denominator you have 3 factorial which means 1 into 2 into 3 so this will get cancelled right. So you can write this as here 3 factorial is there actually 5 factorial means 3 factorial into 4 into 5 so you can cut 3 factorial you will get 4 into 5 divided by 1 into 2 you will get answer as 10 so there are 10 uh, possibilities to select two students to form a team from a uh, group of five students okay so this is the concept of combination so now let us look into the concept of permutation okay so you have n dissimilar things okay so from this n dissimilar things you need to select r things at a time and if it is a question on permutation then it will be answer will be npr so npr is actually n factorial divided by n minus r factorial so for example you have five students so from these five students you need to select two students and you need to arrange them in a bench okay you need to arrange them in a bench and in that bench two students can only sit so from five students you need to select two students to sit on a bench so this is a question on permutation because the arrangement is also important right so the answer will be 5 p2 that is 5 factorial divided by 5 minus 2 which is 3 factorial so 5 factorial is 5 factorial is actually 3 factorial into 4 into 5 so we will get 4 into 5 is equal to 20 so the answer is 20 so this is the concept of permutation so this is the difference between permutation and combination and these are the equations and formula and this is what you need to learn and the thing is um, I will be giving you different examples and before that I will give you some uh, additional tips in order to solve the questions on different kind of problems okay we will do that and then we will be going on to different examples as well so let us move on now let us look into some extra things which you can use in different questions. Just remember ncr is equal to nc n minus r. For example, you have 5c2 is equal to 5 factorial divided by 2 factorial into 5 minus 2 factorial which is 3 factorial. Now 5c3 is equal to 5 factorial divided by 3 factorial into 5 minus 3 which is 2 factorial. So these two are equal. That means 5c2 is equal to 5c3. Actually, 3 means 5 minus 2. So 5c2 is equal to 5c5 minus 2, 2. 5 minus 2. So that is this one. Now, nc0 is equal to ncn is equal to 1. So let's see what is nc0. nc0 means n factorial divided by 0 factorial into n minus 0 factorial, right? So that is equal to n factorial divided by 0 factorial into n factorial right so what is 0 factorial 0 factorial is actually 1 so this will become 1 and this will get cancelled you will get 1 so this also just remember okay now we will see one more thing that is nc0 plus nc1 plus nc2 plus etc etc till ncn you will get 2 raised to n i'll give you an example 5c0 plus 5c1 plus 5c2 plus 5c3 plus 5c4 plus 5c5 is equal to 2 raised to 
5. So we can use this concept in solving a particular kind of question. I am going to explain it to you in the next slide as well. Okay, then we will be, uh, I will explain to you different types of questions and I will uh, tell you how to approach these questions and how we can solve them easily. So let us move on to uh, type of questions. So this is the first model of question. Total number of ways of selecting one or more objects from n given objects is actually is equal to 2 raised to n minus 1. So I will explain it to you with the help of an example. Let's say we have 5 students. I need to select one or more students from this group of 5 students. Okay. So I can select either one student. I can select two student. I can select three student etc. So in order to select one student from 5 students. How many possibilities are there? We have 5 C1 possibilities, right? To select 2 students from 5, we have 5 C2 possibilities. To select 3 students from 5, we have 5 C3 possibilities. To select 4 students from 5, we have 5 C4 possibilities. And to select 5 students from 5, we have 5 C5 possibilities. So if I add all these things, we will get 5 C1 plus 5 C2 plus 5 C3 plus 5c4 plus 5c5 right and we know that from the earlier thing that earlier um, uh, from the earlier th uh, slide i have explained to you that 5c0 plus 5c1 plus 5c2 etc till 5c5 is equal to 2 raised to 5 so this will be is equal to 2 raised to 5 minus 5c0 now 5c0 is nothing but 1 i have already explained this in the previous slide okay so you will get this is equal to 2 raised to 5 minus 1 so this is how we got this formula so if you are selecting one or more object from n given objects you will get the answer as 2 raised to n minus 1 just remember this one so if you get a question uh, like this you can use this formula easily and find out the answer so now let us uh, see a different kind of question. What is the number of selection of R consecutive things from N things in a row? So I will give, give you an example. Uh, let's assume that we have eight, 8 students sitting in a row. A, B, C, D, E, F and G, H. So these are 8 students sitting in a row. So we need to select R consecutive students from this 8. Then what is the possibility? Okay. So we need to select. Uh, we need to select six consecutive things from six consecutive students from this row okay so first possibility is we can select a b c d e f right this is a possibility we are selecting six students right so this is a possibility now we can select this as a possibility and this is a possibility so these are the three so we have three ways in which we can select six consecutive students from eight students in a row right so we can easily find this out as n minus r plus 1. Here n is the total number of students. r is the number of consecutive students we are selecting. Okay. So here there are 8 students and we are selecting 6 consecutive students from the row. So 8 minus 6 plus 1. So 8 minus 6 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. So we also got that there are 3 possibilities. Right. And if the same question is asked like this. What is the number of selection of r consecutive things from n things in a circle so uh, let's assume that there are st six students in a circle like this a b c d e d e and f so these are uh, six students in a circle now we need to let's assume we need to select three students from this six students three consecutive students from this six students right so we can select like this this is one possibility we can select like this this is another possibility we can select like this so th total three possibilities are there now again we can select like this four possibilities we can select like this five possibilities and we can select like this total six possibilities are there so if you are asked to find out the number of selection of r consecutive things from n things in a circle the answer is actually n so here total six students were there we needed to um, uh, we needed to select three students three consecutive students and the answer will be the total number of students itself which is six okay 
So now let us see another type of question. What is the number of permutation of n dissimilar things taken all at a time? For example, you have four students A, B, C and D. So we need to arrange all these four students in a row. Okay. Or in a queue or something like that. So here I am taking all four students. We need to arrange all four students in a row. So these are the given dissimilar things which is four students are there. From this four students I need to select all the four students and then arrange them in a queue. So this is equal to n factorial. So total possibilities will be in our example it will be four factorial because there are four students. So if you are selecting n things from a total n things if you are selecting all the things okay then it will be answer will be n factorial. So now let us see another type of question. What is the number of permutation of n things taken all at a time out of which p are identical of one kind and q are identical of another kind. So here we will give you an example. Let us assume that we have a word Manorama. So I need to arrange all the all the letters in the word Manorama and I need to uh, get different um, different words whether it is of meaning or not. Okay. So I need to arrange the word Manorama. We have how many letters? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 8 letters are there. So I need to rearrange these 8 letters and uh, find out the total number of uh, words that I can form from Manorama. Okay. But here the thing is A is repeating 3 times. Right. M is repeating 4 times. Uh, sorry 2 times. So here the answer will not be 8 factorial. If all the things are dissimilar then the answer was 8 factorial. Okay, if you are I, in the previous slide, I have uh, explained to you that if you are selecting n different things and dissimilar things taken all at a time is n factorial itself. But here it's not dissimilar, right? M is repeating two times and A is repeating three times. So the answer will be 8 factorial divided by 2 factorial into 3 factorial because M is repeating two times and A is repeating three times. So this is how you need to solve this kind of problems if similar things are occurring. So now let us see another type of question. What is the number of permutation of n dissimilar things taken all at a time when m specified things always comes together. So this is equal to actually m factorial into n minus m plus 1 factorial. So I will give you an example. Let us assume a, b, c, D and E. These are five students. Now I need to arrange these five students in a row. Okay. In a bench. Okay. But the thing is that A and B are very close friends. So they will always sit together. So I cannot separate A and B. Even if I am arranging all these five students in a bench, I need to arrange A and B such that they are always coming together. Okay. So they have to come together. So here in this case, what you need to do is that since A and B are always coming together, Treat A and B as one entity. Okay. Treat A and B as one entity. If you treat A and B as one entity, how many uh, possibilities will come? A and B, I am treating as one entity. So, one, two, three, four. Four elements are there. So, it will come four factorial. Right. But A and B can sit in this way, then they are together. A and B can also sit in this way, right. B coming first and A coming second. Then also they are together. So, if I am taking in this way, in this way again I will get 4 factorial. So the answer will be 4 factorial plus 4 factorial. You will get 2 into 4 factorial. So this is the answer. Okay. And if I am applying this formula what I will get. M means the number of persons who have to come together. Here A and B are coming together that is 2. That is 2 factorial into. N is total number of students that is here 5 is there. 5 minus 2 plus 1. 5 minus 2 is 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. So 2 factorial into you got 4 factorial. 2 factorial is actually 2. Then you will get 2 into 4 factorial. We are getting the same answer by using the formula and also by just applying the logic. In this kind of question what you need to do if, if M specified things are coming together then you need to treat that things coming together as a single entity. Then you need to solve the problem. Okay. So now let us look into some UPSC questions. So this is a question from UPC 2022. The letters A, B, C, D and E are arranged in such a way that there are exactly two letters between A and E. 
how many such arrangements are there so the thing about upsc questions is that even though upsc has been asking more questions from permutations and combination most of these questions can be um, solved using just the concepts without using any formula so uh, let us see how we can solve this problem so it has said that there are five letters right a b c d and e so there are five letters we have five position we need to arrange these letters in such a way that there are two letters between a and e now let's assume that a is here then e will be here because then only there will be two letters in between a and e also if a is here e should be here right and there is another possibility like if e is here a will be here then only there are two letters in between a and e now there is also a different possibility e can be here and a can be here then also uh, there are two letters in between e and a now we need to find out how many arrangements are there so we have already written a and e in all these cases now we have b c and d remaining right so in this position i can write b c or d so i have three possibilities so whatever i have written here i cannot write it here then there is two possibilities here and one possibility here that is 3 into 2 into 1 will become six possibilities now when it comes to the second case again i can write three letters here b c or d so there are three possibilities then whatever i have written in this first position i cannot write it here so there are two possibilities again again one possibility so six possibilities will come similarly here also six possibilities will come here also six possibilities will come so total 24 possibilities are there so c 24 is the right answer so now let us look into a different question this is also from upsc 2022 there are nine cups placed on a table arranged in equal number of rows and columns out of which six cups contain coffee and three cups contain tea so there are nine cups right let's say that these are the nine cups okay there there are same number of rows and columns so the cups will be arranged like this and out of this six have six contain coffee and three contains tea in how many ways can they be arranged so that each row should contain at least one cup of coffee so here what we will do we will first find out the total number of possibilities then we will subtract those possibilities in which at least one cup of coffee is not coming in a row okay then we will get the number of possibilities in which uh, the row will contain at least one cup of coffee so here total number of possibilities is 9c6 how i am getting 9c6 is that there are nine cups right total nine cups are there in these nine cups out in, in six of these nine cups i need to fill coffee okay then rest three is anyways tea so we don't need to consider the tea here whether it is tea or whether it is any other drink or even if they are kept empty it doesn't matter because out of the nine i am filling six cups with coffee and rest of all the cups are filling with tea so just consider the possibilities as 9c6 right so the answer will come 9 factorial divided by 6 factorial into 3 factorial so if you solve this one you will get it as 84 so there are total 84 possibilities but now we need to subtract the possibilities in which at least one cup of coffee is not coming in a row okay so here if i feel like this if i feel t t t in this row i am filling all the cups with tea and all the cu other cups i am filling with coffee so in this case in the first row there is cup of coffee is not there right all the cups are filled with tea so in this case the this doesn't satisfy at least one cup of coffee in a row is not satisfying in this condition so we got one condition okay now if i am filling these cups with coffee and these cups with tea again there are six cups with coffee and three cups with tea in the second row we don't have a cup of coffee so we got second possibility now i am filling coffee like this and the third row i am filling with tea so here in this third row at least one cup of coffee is not there so there are total three possibilities in which at least one cup of coffee is not there in a row so out from 84 we need to subtract this 3 
in order to get all the possibilities in which at least one cup of coffee will be there in a row. So answer is 84 minus 3, you will get 81. So the answer is D, 81. Now let us look into a different question from UPSC 2022. What is the number of numbers of the form 0.xy where x and y are distinct and non-zero? Okay. So 0.xy means it can be different numbers like 0.12 can be there, 0.23 can be there, 0.57 can be there. So in this way different possibilities are there. We need to find out the total number of possibilities. Here it is said that x and y are distinct. That means they cannot have the same digit. Okay. And there is also non-zero. So the, we have x and y, we have two positions. In this first position which is fi being filled with x, we cannot write 0 because the digits are non-zero and it is distinct. So total we have 10 digits from 0 to 9. Out of this 0 we cannot write here. Right? So we can write other 9 possibilities here. Now in the second, second position, we cannot write 0 because, because it is non-zero and we cannot also write the digit that we have put in the first place because if you do that then it won't become distinct. Distinct means x and y should be different. So here in this second position 0 won't come and also the number that we have written here also won't come. So total 8 possibilities will be there. So 9 into 8 is 72. So option is A 72. So this is a question from UPSC 2021. Using 22333 as digits, how many numbers greater than 30,000 can be formed? So since it is a number greater than 30,000, the first digit will be 3 because here only we can use 2 and 3 as digits. So to get a number greater than 30,000, we need to use 3 as the first, first digit, right? So 1, 3 is fixed. So this is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 digit number, right? And first will be 3. So it's fixed. Okay, we there is no other option to write this one. Now in order to fill these four positions, we have two twos and two threes. So uh, from here, we need to fill these four positions. So total possibility will be 4 factorial divided by 2 is repeating 2 times, 2 factorial. 3 is repeating 2 times, again 2 factorial. So 4 factorial by 2 factorial into 2 factorial, which is equal to 3 into 4 divided by 1 into 2. The answer is 6. So let us see a different question. This is again from UPSC 2021. On a chess board, in how many different ways can 6 consecutive squares be chosen on diagonals, diagonals along a straight path? Okay, so in a chessboard, we know that there are 64 squares in a chessboard. So this is one diagonal of the chessboard and this is another, this is the another diagonal of the chessboard. So along this diagonal, we need to choose six consecutive squares. So how many squares are there in the diagonal? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There are 8, 8 uh, squares in one of the diagonal and eight squares in another diagonal so we need to choose six consecutive square so in one of the diagonal how many possibilities are there to select six consecutive squares from eight squares we know that it is eight minus six plus one so eight minus six is two two plus one is three again in this diagonal we have total eight uh, squares out of which we need to select six consecutive squares so eight minus six plus one again it is three so total 3 plus 3, 6 possibilities are there. So option B is the right answer. So let us see another question. This is again from UPSC 2021. There are persons arranged in a row. Another person has to, actually there are 6 persons arranged in a row. The question is 6 persons. So there are 6 persons arranged in a row. Another person has to shake hands with 3 of them. So that he should not shake hands with two consecutive persons. So let us say we let us assume we have six persons. One, two, three, four, five, six. So these are the six persons. So another person, so some other person is there. So he need to shake hand with three of them so that he should not shake hands with two consecutive person. Okay. So he can shake hands with one first person, then with third person, and then with five person. 
if he do like this then there is no he will not shake hands with two consecutive persons so 1 3 5 is a possibility now 1 3 6 is also a possibility because in, in this also he will not shake hands with consecutive persons now 1 4 6 is also a possibility right 1 4 6 is also a possibility uh, again there is no consecutive persons now 2 4 6 is also a possibility right because in two if we shake hands with 2 4 and 6 also two consecutive person is no uh, he is not shaking hands with two consecutive persons so 2 4 6 is also a possibility so these are the four possibilities so answer is b 4 there is no other possibility here so we will look into one more question this is from upsc 2019 so this is a denomination type question let's read the question first suppose you have sufficient amount of rupee currency in three denomination so we have a lot of currencies with us i have rupees 1 currency notes so many currency notes are there and rupees 10 notes are also there so many of them are there and rupees 50 notes are also there in how many different ways can you pay pay a bill of rupees 107 so we got a bill of rupees 107 then in how many ways we can pay them like for example i can pay 250 50 rupee bill okay then i can pay 7 1 rupee bill then total will be 107 so in this way in how many ways we can pay the bill so there is an easy trick to solve the questions on this kind of questions which is based on denominations of currency so i am writing 50 10 and 1 like this and making three columns so 50 10 and 1 is actually the denominations that is available available right now assume that we are paying the maximum number of 50 rupee notes so the maximum number of the our bill is 107 so the maximum number of 50 rupee note that we can pay is 2 if we, if i pay 250 uh, rupee note then total 100 is already gone it's paid 100 is paid now balance is 7 so i cannot use any 10 rupee note because if i use 10 rupee note it become 10 right i only need to pay 7 more so all the seven, all i will be using seven uh, one rupee notes to complete the bill right so this is a possibility now if i use one fifty rupee note then just subtract one from two so you will get i am using one fifty rupee note so fifty rupees is gone balance there is fifty seven total one note seven out of one note seven i paid fifty now balance fifty seven is there so fifty seven i can pay in different ways for example if i am paying zero tens i am not using any 10 rupee note then i need to pay all the 57 with 1 rupee note right now if i am paying 1 10 rupee note okay then 47 1 rupee note i need to pay if i am paying with 2 10 rupee notes then 37 1 rupee note i need to pay if i am paying with 3 10 rupee note with then 27 1 rupee note i need to pay so in this way it goes so just what you need to do is here in this in this second uh, in this row or in this cell 0 to 5 10 rupee notes are possible because if i pay with 0 10 rupee note then all the 57 i need to pay with 1 rupee note if i am paying 5 10 rupee notes then 50 is already gone here balance is 7 then 7 rupees i need to pay with 1 rupee note so 0 to 5 i can either use 0 10 1 10 2 10 rupee note 3 10 rupee note 4 10 rupee note or 5 10 rupee note so 0 to 5 is possible that is 0 is possible 1 is possible 2 is possible 3 is possible 4 is possible and 5 is possible so there are six possibilities in this case here there were one possibility right now again there is one more case that is i am using 0 50 rupee note so similarly so see if i am using 0 50 no, 50 rupee notes all the 107 rupees i need to pay with 10 and 1 rupee note so i can uh, i can either pay 0 10 rupee note then i can pay 1 10 rupee note i can pay 2 10 rupee note in this way i can pay up to 10 10 rupee note if i am paying with 0 10 rupee note then 107 rupees i need to pay with 1 rupee note if i am paying with 10 10 rupee notes then 100 rupees are gone i need to pay the balance 7 with 1 rupee note so these are the different possibility 0 is possible 1 is possible 2 is possible in this way total 11 possibilities will be here so 1 plus 6 plus 11 is 18 so option c is the right answer 
so in this way you can solve the questions of denominations very easily okay so guys thank you so much if you like this video please do subscribe share and support i will be coming with a new video very soon thank you